Hello, everybody. Welcome to Worship Today here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We're glad you're with us. We're gathering together and we're continuing to study the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to be taking a look at um, the petition of Thy will be done. We're asking God, our Heavenly Father, that His will is done in our lives as it is in heaven. And when you think about God's will, Today we're going to take a look at two different ways you can think about it. There is a revealed will where you are absolutely certain beyond a shadow of a doubt what God's will for you is. And then there's also a hidden will. And that's when things happen in our lives and, and we don't know why those things happen. But um, God has a plan and a purpose for those things. And he's working his will in our lives and it's good. And so we're going to kind of work through those two ideas today. God's revealed will, where you are absolutely certain, and God's hidden will, where you don't know what's going on for sure, but you know that God loves you and that he cares about you. Glad you're here with us. We'll see you in worship in just a minute.
Hello, everybody. Welcome to worship. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray thee of thy boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture lesson for today is Psalm 13. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. And our second scripture lesson is from Romans chapter 8, beginning at the 31st verse. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who is raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And our gospel lesson for today is from Matthew chapter 6, beginning at the 25th verse. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, 
and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon, in all of his splendor, was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. We continue now to confess our faith with the historic Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I 
The Lord's Prayer is Jesus's prayer that he shares with us. It's a model prayer. It's a structure and format and content for us to use in our own prayers when we pray to our Father who art in heaven. Today, we're going to continue to look at the Lord's Prayer and we're going to look at the phrase, thy will be done. But what is God's will? The Bible talks about God's will in two different ways. And if you understand these two ways, then you'll have a solid, Christ-centered, scriptural-based handle on God's will for your life. The first is what theologians call God's revealed will. The second is called God's hidden will. God's revealed will is found in Holy Scripture, and it's summed up quite nicely in many verses including these two. Here's one from 2 Peter. This is God's will. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness, but he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. That's God's will. Here's how John talks about it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God's revealed will is salvation in his son, Jesus Christ. God sent his son, Jesus, into the world to be its savior. And Jesus has done the work of our salvation. In his life, he always hallowed God's name and glorified it in all that he did. He brought God's kingdom into the world through his teaching and his miracles, where he used his power and authority to set people free, to forgive them and to give them life. And then in his death, his death on the cross, Jesus suffered for you and for me and for all people. Jesus suffered for our sins. God the Father unleashed the full fury of his wrath against sin, and it landed on his son Jesus when he suffered and died on the cross. All of our sins, all the wrath of God fell on Jesus for us and in our place. God's only begotten son suffered and died on a cross for all people. He was there for you. He was there in your place. And then on the third day, he rose from the dead and God announced to the world the forgiveness of sins to every single person. God's revealed will is that all people believe in Jesus as their savior and to live with him forever in the kingdom of heaven. God's will is that people believe in his son. God does not want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. That's God's revealed will. So what that means on a personal level, on a personal level, is that God's will for you is that you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, 
and that by believing in him, you will have eternal life. That's God's will for you. That's God's revealed will for you. And it is 100% clear. It is 100% certain. There's no need to doubt it. There's no questioning it. Over and over again in scripture, God has told us what his revealed will is. God does not want anyone to perish, but everyone, including you, to come to salvation, to believe in Jesus, to have your sins forgiven, to live with him forever in the kingdom of heaven. The harder part and more difficult is to understand God's hidden will. Sometimes it's hard to come to terms with because in short, God doesn't tell us everything we want to know, especially when it comes to hardships and pain and suffering and all the many and various things that we have to go through in life. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, God works in mysterious ways. That's a reference to his hidden will. His ways are beyond our understanding. God doesn't always tell us everything we want to know. I'm sure that in your own life, you've wondered why this or that has happened before. Haven't we all prayed, why is this happening? God doesn't answer those why questions. It's part of his hidden will. What we do know, though, is that for us as believers in Christ, for us as Christians, pain and suffering is not a bad thing. It's part of God's good and gracious will for you. Even though we might not understand why, we know that God is at work in our lives. So when you consider God's hidden will, including those times when, when you're going through pain and suffering, including those times when there's all kinds of twists and turns in life that, that you can't make sense of, God wants you to trust him. He's your father in heaven. He loves you. He cares about you. And he promises that he's at work in your life. He's using his mighty power and authority for good and not for evil in your life. And so when you, when you go through difficult times, even when you think about God's hidden will, each day we remain faithful. No matter what might happen, we remain faithful faithful. The, the Bible teaches us to patiently endure the trials and the burdens in our lives because we know and we believe that our lives are in our Father's hands and there's no safer place to be. We might not understand why things are happening, but we know our Father in heaven, and he's at work, and he's at work for good in our lives through everything that might happen. Of course, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane is the prime example of this. Do you remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed three times, Father, if you're willing Take this cup from me, yet not my will, but thy will be done. God's will was that Jesus would be rejected. He would suffer. He would die on a cross of all things for the sins of the world. And what did Jesus do? Jesus remained faithful. He patiently endured. He trusted his Father in heaven. 
And then on the third day, he rose from the dead and he is the savior of the world. God the Father was at work for good, for the good of all of us, in Jesus' crucifixion, his suffering and death. When you consider God's hidden will in your own life, simply trust in your Father in heaven. Trust that he's at work for good in your life as he's promised, even through the pain and the suffering and the unknowns that you might have to go through. That's it. Go no farther. Trust your Father in heaven. Cling to his promises. Remain faithful. Patiently endure. When you think of God's hidden will in your life and all the things that happen to us, trust, put your faith in your Father in heaven and all of his promises to you. We live in a broken and a sinful world that brings all sorts of troubles and pain and suffering. And as Christians, we are not exempt from that. We are not exempt from the pain, the suffering, and the trials that go through life. Some of it's severe. Some of it's long-term. Some of it happens to people that we love and are close to. The reason why these things are happening, why we suffer, is not revealed to us. It's hidden from us. But we learn from Jesus that in those times, of those times of suffering and pain and the unknowns, we're going to trust our Father in heaven. We're going to believe his word and promises that he's working for good and that he's going to guide and strengthen and comfort us through it all. Martin Luther, in his small catechism, teaches us about the Lord's Prayer and this petition. In the third petition, it says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Luther writes that this means that the good and gracious will of God is certainly done without our prayer. But we pray in this petition that it might be done among us also. And then he writes, how is God's will done? God's will is done when he breaks and hinders every evil counsel and will, which would not let us hallow his name or let his kingdom come, such as the will of the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh. But that he strengthens us and keeps us steadfast in his word and unto faith until our end. This is his good and gracious will. I love that last part. That's really the focus of this. The last part said that God's will is done when he strengthens us and keeps us steadfast in his word and in faith until our end. This is his good and gracious will. It's also his promise to you. So no matter what might happen in your life, know and believe, pray and confess, thy will be done. It turns out to be a bold and confident confession of faith in the Father's love and care for you. Because it doesn't matter what happens in our lives. God is still our Father. He still loves us. He still cares about us. And he's promised that he's at work with his mighty power and authority to make everything work for good in our lives. God's will is never to torment you or to hurt you. God's will is never to drive you away from him because you hurt so much. God's will is not to plague you with doubts or despair. God's will is not to punish you for your sins. Jesus was already punished for you 
when he died on the cross. God's will for you is not that you live each day in fear and worry, panic and stress. Rather, God's will for you is that he strengthens you and keeps you firm in his word and in faith one day at a time. Remember that in the Lord's Prayer, you're praying to your Father in heaven, and you know who your Father in heaven is. The Bible is full of promises that he makes to you. You know that um, your Father in heaven loves you and cares about you. You hallow his name in your life. You pray his kingdom comes. You know him as loving and kind. You know that he is your refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. You know that he watches over your life. You know who your father in heaven, in heaven is, that he loves you and cares about even the smallest detail of your life. So when you pray, thy will be done, you are committing yourself body and soul and all things into your heavenly Father's hands. When you pray, thy will be done, you are saying, O Lord, strengthen me and keep me steadfast in your word and in faith until my end. So no matter what your cross may be, maybe it's health issues, Maybe it's family trouble. Maybe it's financial worries. Maybe it's work problems. Maybe it's relationships. Maybe it's the fear of the unknown. Whatever your cross may be, trust in your heavenly Father's care for you. That's faith. That's thy will be done. When you think about God's will, the easiest way to think about it is in two different ways. The first is God's revealed will, and that's salvation. God does not want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance, to believe in his son Jesus as their savior. That is beyond question. It is 100% certain. It is clear. That's God's will for every single person on earth, including you. And then there's his hidden will. And that is mysterious to us. And it is unknown. We don't always know, and most likely we'll never know, why most things happen in our lives. But rather than revealing those things to us and why they happen, the Lord does something different. He strengthens us. He strengthens us to trust in him and his word, to remain faithful to him and his promises, no matter what might happen in our lives. For God's revealed will and for his hidden will, we pray, thy will be done. Amen. We pray. God the Father in heaven, we thank you for your love and care for us. Send your Holy Spirit so that we might rightly pray, Thy will be done. Deepen our faith in your Son Jesus as our Savior, so that we may always rejoice in the forgiveness of our sins. Teach us to trust in you and to rely on your promises as we live each day. Strengthen us through thy word so that we may patiently endure and remain faithful to you in difficult times. Lord, we are dependent on you for all good things. And we turn to you in times of trouble as we pray, thy will be done. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now we join together in this prayer to our Father in heaven. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. See you next week in worship. Also there is